Ezekiel the third here, I'm sitting with my, my new friend. Sure, yeah. <laughs> sure, we'll, yeah. We'll get there by the end. No, I, I actually, I, I tweeted out earlier that I, I, I'm among uh, new people, and I'm, I'm trying to activate my super friend-making power. All right. And now you're, you're it. Let's warm it up. You're the first one. A hand I, on the knee might make a step back. Oh, is it, yeah. is it putting me? Okay, okay. Okay, <laughs> forget I did that. Uh, but we're not here to talk about how awkward I am. We're sure. here to talk about... Uh, comics, and we're here to talk about Gasolina. Sure, yeah. Excellent. Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about your your uh, your new comic. Sure. Uh, I, I created a comic with uh, Nico Walter, and we brought on a colorist Matt Lopez and letterer Russ Wooten. Um, it's basically a high concept is what happens when the Mexican drug war goes supernatural, um, and we kind of follow a a couple a Newlywood couple uh, as they become unlikely leaders in this kind of uh, resistance against. The, this strange new cartel that's using crazy new inhuman ways to slaughter and humiliate their opposition. Yeah, I actually uh, I read uh, some of it. They give us give us a little advanced copy, and uh, they don't, they don't pull any punches. No, it, no, there's some there's some gruesome shit in there. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's I've kind of been it's it's a horror crime uh, romance story. Um, I think being on like the the further side of being a newlywed, like there was a lot of, uh, you know, how do you once you enter that relationship, you know, until death do us part, and how much you trust them, especially in a high stakes situation when the world is quickly going to shit, mm -hmm. who you rely on, um, and the the couple at the center of this, Randy is American and Amalia is Mexican, and um, there's cultural differences, but they seem to bend th uh, when the story starts, they've been through enough. To kind of build this trust that most couples don't have quite yet, and uh, it's it's quickly tested as uh, their encounter with Los Carritos, the the cartel, uh, happens. Yeah, uh, the, something I kind of wanted to mention after reading it is there's somewhat of a love story. It's yeah. it's like the, the underlying subtext or you know sub theme. Yeah, is like their their relationship. I mean, it's you know everyone loves loves drama and and. Uh, there's no will they, won't they. It's kind of, I don't know what it's, it, there's really no, I think maybe Friday Night Lights where Coach and his wife, Coach's wife kind of had this very stable relationship. So I wanted to pit something that was very stable and maybe test it um, in these extreme circumstances of, uh, you know, gunfights and rescuing people and uh, testing their allegiance. But I, my actually, I, I worked in romance novels when I first started publishing. Oh, really? Yeah, I worked for Harlequin. So, oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, there's a there's a real appeal of like kind of presenting a very realistic, I, I hope, uh, romance, um, and each bringing their own baggage, and uh, and how they deal with it. Sure. Yeah. Now you actually do stuff for Skybound. What, what? Tell everybody who doesn't know what you actually sure. do. Sure. Do as your other gig. Uh, I'm the editor in chief of Skybound, so I oversee all comics publishing. Um, so we currently have I think 10 active titles, another 20 in development. Uh, plus I help out. Film and TV, interactive, and other departments on, uh, you know, when they bring comics into other media, I, I come in there to make sure that it feels authentic and true and making sure the creator uh, stays involved throughout. So, uh, you know, when Robert's not able to help out uh, on different Walking Dead, I'm kind of the guy that, that steps in right behind him and work with the Telltale folks and uh, work with the other, all the other many partners we have on the Walking Dead. I gotta imagine it's gotta be like at, at times it's gotta be kind of a thankless job where it's like, <laughs> um, actually in the comic they would never do that. Yeah, it's I mean it's weird because it's like <laughs> there's not an overwhelming amount of continuity like with Marvel or DC, but I think Walking Dead is a very specific zombie story. Mm -hmm. um, you can't just make it Mad Max with zombies and kind of push things. It's very grounded, there's a lot of human emotion, there's rules to these zombies, and a lot of what we discover is like, what is a Walking Dead story without Rick? Because right. Right, you know, Rick is the Walking Dead, He's Rick and Carl and the Grimes family and the affiliates around them. So what happens when you can't use those characters? How do you make a Walking Dead story feel like the Walking Dead? And um, it's mostly trying to just make the participant cry uh, make them invest in the character. You, then son of a, you do that every time. <laughs> rob, it, <laughs> rob it from them. And that's something that, you know, I think the, when Robert started working with Telltale, they kind of established very early on with Lee and Clem, and yep. it's definitely influenced our other businesses. So I can't, I mean, it's, it's astounding, because I, I, I'm uh, in the video game side of, the, of yeah. the Skybound stuff, the Telltale, Walking Dead, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. It is surprising how loyal and how invested they are yeah. in these Walking Dead characters and how, how well they come out. Yeah, I mean, that's a, this side of fandom I had an experience. I mean, I, before this, I came from DC Comics. I was working on, you know, Green Lantern books and Suicide Squad books. But, like, 
the concentrated fandom that generates the comic book and from the TV show is just, and Telltale. I mean, my assistant, Ariel, her main exposure before we hired her was the Telltale video game. So that's a whole other generation that just came, kind of came in through that. So um, it's fine. I got, a, I got a cousin, I always talk about her, um, Melissa, who wasn't a comic book reader, but she's intensely into The Walking Dead. She's a mother of two. Mm -hmm. And it's just everyone can relate to something that's going on in the show. Um, so we hope to bring that not only to The Walking Dead, but all of our books, making sure people are invested in the characters and the world so that no matter what sort of crazy genre shit happens, you are siding with that family or the, you know, that, that guy, that woman. Um, that's kind of like the approach I brought to Gasolina, I hope. Um, what made you take the, take the jump from being editor to being writer? Um, yeah, I, I, had study, I had studied writing in college and that's kind of where my craft and what helped me become an editor took into place. But I work with so many talented people that it gets infectious and uh, there was an opportunity. Um, I had done some, some side gigs writing, book doctoring, and you know, the conversation came up with, with DA and Robert about you interested. So I actually kind of beneath the radar put together three scripts. I I'd met Nico at a convention, um, hired him, paid him out of my own pocket to put together the first issue. Mm -hmm. And then once I had all that, presented it to the guys. Because I didn't want to just waltz right in and pick the, our best artists and just kind of... I wanted to make sure it felt authentic as a, as a first-time comic book creator. Right, sure, sure, um, sure. And this is your first time. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I'm finally excited. It's, <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, I get excited for people to kind of ha fulfill their personal vision. Right. Um, so to be on, on this side of it and see the skybound machinery in place and talk to people about how to how to move this in different directions. But, you know, I just actually finished issue, writing issue 12. This is an ongoing series, and Nico is working on issue 9. So it's important for us to come out on time and still have that high quality. And, you know, because once you ship that first issue, those deadlines become so real, and you eat up nine issues quicker than you can think. It's, oh, my God, yeah. Um, it, takes, it takes a lot longer to make them than to, uh, to publish them. So Absolutely. Yeah. Um, how, how does it feel? Because you can't just edit your own shit, right? No, I don't. I don't have much. Yeah, how does, it, how does it feel to, to have to hand that off to someone who does your job for other people? Well, I mean, I have I have a great editorial staff, John Moisen and my assistant Ariel, and uh, Ariel and I. We all discuss story um, on everything. So even the okay. books I don't individually edit, like Redneck, uh, which John brought in, we still discuss the script and discuss the art. So Ariel and I have a great relationship. We talk all of our comics, and I, I thought as a good way to break her in and give her more responsibility, it would be working with me, which may, may seem crazy because you're like. You're her boss. Um, but I have that same relationship with Robert. Robert's my boss, but I still edit Walking Dead, Invincible, Outcast, and uh, you know, we live. We live, so yeah. Um, yeah, we're pretty open. We have a good, good sense, we have good communication, which is what's important in uh, any creative relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, this particular story, uh, has it been bubbling in the back of your mind, or did it just come to you? Or, is, I mean, is it a story you've always wanted to tell or a story that, that you needed to tell immediately? Um, it had popped in my mind a couple years ago. I was listening to a podcast, and they were discussing, you know, the current state of Mexico and, and the narco wars. Okay. Um, and they use the term mega murder, which is just like what they're doing is just inventing new ways to kill people. So my thought was, what's a new way for them to kill people? Um, which is sort of in, in the pages of this book, and it's, uh, you know, kind of, supernatural uh, in origin. Um, and that came from like, kind of want to tell a horror story um, and mix crime. I love crime. Um, and what f freaks me out is more kind of like Cronenberg body horror stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that just like, sure. <laughs> just get, makes me like itch yeah. and, and twitch. Um, I'm always telling people to watch like Dead Ringers. I just, I love Dead, <laughs> I love Dead Ringers. Yep. Um, I don't know. So I just kind of want to have something that felt, felt outsized, but also people could relate to the, the weirdness of it. Excellent. Um, now, uh, this book is not out yet. No, it comes out uh, September 20th. Uh, the first issue comes out September 20th. We're kind of right in the, the pre-order stage. And what we encourage all our fans to do is to go to their local retailer and, and pre-order it, because that's the best gauge of, of actual sales. Um, Image comic books always sell out on the first, first issues generally sell out the first or second day. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that there's plenty available to those who want to read it. Um, so yeah, I mean, you're, uh, we can pre-order up until uh, like late August. So, you know, um, either on my Twitter or Skybound's Twitter, we'll have plenty of details. What's your Twitter? Uh, at Sean Makowitz. Okay. It's not the easiest to spell, but it, yeah, Google it, will correct you. Yeah, I, well, I had to ask you. Yeah. Um, now, 
I don't want, I mean, this is the, this is the ash can, right? Yeah, we have that at the, the convention. We give it out to all the retailers um, as an advanced look. It's the full first, uh, e the first issue is 30 pages. Yeah, and you don't, I mean, not, you're not really <laughs> giving anything away there. <laughs> but there's some, there's some, there's some horrible shit that happens. <laughs> well, I would hope so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's, it's probably, we kind of have a sky bound sense of storytelling. Sure. Um, so it's like looking for a genre that people are familiar with and kind of twisting it, say about 10%. Um, so it's still familiar, but there's a new access point. Um, and I think that's what we do here while having grounded characters and hopefully surprising reveals every issue to kind of keep those monthly readers hooked, and then when people come on six months later when the first trade comes out, they either, they don't want to wait for the next trade, they want to jump into the monthly books. Um, so yeah, horrible shit. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, hopefully a, you know, a, a tender romance, or at least people, like a real ride or die couple. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. You get that feeling from them after reading it, you get the feeling like they would probably go through hell for each other. Yeah, and that's what, I mean, honestly, that's what this book is about, putting, right. <laughs> putting them through hell. Um, so yeah. Uh, what's what's the, what's the transition like from from editor to writer? I like, mean, it's, it's what kind of mindset the changes do you have to have? Not or not any? many because I mean you know we're we work on twenty five thirty series so I'm always sure. getting script notes so like keeping those like storytelling muscles strong. Um, and it's just something I do when I go home after I put my uh, after I have dinner with my family and put my son to bed. It's like I get a sit back and, and write for a little bit when I have my free time, when I'm not completely exhausted at the end of the day. Right, uh, yeah. But we're working far enough ahead that I can kind of uh, work in batches and, and stay well ahead of Nico and give him plenty of room to run. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just putting in the work. I can't just talk about the work. I actually have to do the work on this one. Yeah. Sit down on the computer, type it up. But, uh, yeah, it's fun. Do you, I mean, do you suffer from, like, writer's block or anything, or do you have, like, moments where you just get frustrated, like, I don't know what to do next? Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, some of it is uh, make, finessing it and making sure that it does feel real and connects right. moment to moment, but I have a pretty good sense of, of where it was going six issues at a time. I kind of work in six-issue blocks mm -hmm. um, and tell smaller stories that, that build to a, a bigger conclusion, but, you know, I, we always put up signposts every... Uh, like the end of a first issue, I think, has to have a, a really nice hook, and then the end of a trade has to have a nice hook to keep that, those readers back. And uh, there's enough mythology here to uncover, but hopefully you're just so invested in the characters that what actually happens to them, the, the wins they have, the losses they suffer, um, really pay off. Right on. Yeah. Uh, someone in the chat said, Sean, can you sign me a copy of Gasolina Number 1? Sure, yeah. Sure. Find me. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Uh, now, are you... Uh, I'm wondering why it takes place where it takes place. Are you yeah. fascinated with like the cartel ideas or, or like that kind of um, story? I mean, it's a good chance to do a, a modern day Western, but also has the substance of, you know, there's real, a lot of social issues and political issues, you know, between the US and Mexico and also sort of Mexico's relationship to the people that colonized them in, in Spain and kind of that horrible chain of events that's like really transformed this culture and uh, it's been fascinating to, to research and learn more about it, but also not get bogged down in that because, you know, I'm, it's not always my story to tell, but uh, I found an access point that I think relates to what's going on now and also is entertaining enough that it feels like a, a modern day Western with crazy shit um, happening hopefully every issue. I mean, some of the influences, you know, I, I'm a big fan of like Hellboy and BPRD and I think some of that, like the cover kind of feels in that direction, but, uh, I don't know. It's it's always a challenge. <laughs> so you, okay, let me ask you a question. Since you <laughs> since you kind of work for Skybound. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Kind not kind of. I, I've been here for five years, so uh, <laughs> I'm like the second longest employee. Do you do you find time to to actually like read comics and or or play like Super Fight and shit like that? Uh, not as much time for Super Fight. I've played it um, mostly when we're able to go and like have some time alone. But uh, yeah, I, I read a lot of comics, watch a lot of TV movies when I can. Um, yeah. Got any favorites right now that you're that you're really into? Um, like yeah. I just I just watched Glow. That was that was. I I I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, I uh, what did I just I, I like this book called Kaiju Max. That's from uh, Oni. It's basically about a, a <laughs> <laughs> one guy. Woo! It's a it's, hell yeah. It's a super max prison for kaiju monsters. Oh what? Yeah. That sounds um, amazing. And it, it just kind of hits these different emotions that most comics don't because it you know it it is a prison drama. But it also has the fantastical elements of like a Mecha Godzilla being in there and a Mothra <laughs> being in there, and each one kind of, each kind of sub sub genre of kaiju kind of has their own gang. Um, 
But like, you know, I, I used to love the show Oz, but like it's kind of Oz with kaiju, which isn't a pleasant experience no, all the time. No, man, that sounds horrible. And all the, um, all the prison guards are like basically like Ultraman can like grow in size. Right, to like yeah. their ass and like they're kind of dirty like a lot of CEOs are, so it's... Yeah, like, no, I'm sure they get, they get paid off to but, like sneak things in. Yes, whatever. exactly. Yeah. Um, and like they eat radiation and it's... Uh, yeah, that's why this guy, Alexander Cannon, who does everything on the book. Uh, I don't know if he letters it, but he does, he writes and draws it and it's just fantastic. I think they just launched their, their third arc and uh, yeah, it kind of hits me in places that a lot of comics don't. So uh, <laughs> it's uncomfortable at times. It makes you sad and, and full of terror, but also like happy and uh, yeah, I don't know, it's weird. It's called Kaiju Max? Kaiju Max, yeah. That sounds awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, looks like our time is about up. We've got uh, Gasolina is coming out when again? It's coming out uh, September 20th, but uh, yeah, pre-order it with your local comic book store now, please. Pre yeah, pre-order it, please. Yeah, I think, I think we got to be friends by the end of this. Uh, can, I, can I shake your hand? <laughs> sure. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. <laughs> John McAwist, the story is, uh, the book is Gasolina. Don't go away, we got lots more stuff coming to you right here from the Skybound uh, cabin. Sure, <laughs> Sean Kirkham. Sean Kirkham's coming up, stick around. <laughs>